I'm Lou Scott, and this is the Geppetto Room, where you don't have to be creative to be creative. You just have to be you. Because here we're going to explore, we're going to explain techniques and concepts that are going to make it easy for you to innovate, to create, to transform your thinking, your thinking into practical solutions that Vermont needs. That's what we're going to do here. So we can live a life here, a better work, better play, better living in the state of Vermont. Now, remember this date, 2040. We've been told that 2040 is a very auspicious date. It's a, a date that's going to be very important to us. And let me explain. A few years ago, a, the state hired a research firm to do a piece of research on the state of the state, you know, along a, a various indices, uh, population, uh, demographics, uh, transportation, economics, um, infrastructure, tourism, and so forth. And in most cases, and most of all the indices, we, we scored average or above average, except in one, except in a critical one, and that was demographics. We were getting older, our population was decreasing, and our young were leaving. No young were coming in. That's a critical economic indicator now. Attached to that, attached to that um, series, attached to that research was this note that 2040, about 20 years from now, would be a turning point, would be a point where we would, we would be, be better off living and playing and working in the state of Vermont. Now, that's about 20 years from now. I don't want to wait that long. First of all, I'm going to be dead in 20 years, but I don't want my children to have to put up with the bad stuff before the good stuff happens, or all my grandchildren. So I have three suggestions that we could do together, okay, to maybe accelerate that 2040 date, because we need to accelerate it. It's a dire shape, okay? We, one, of the, one of the things I want to talk about is the idea that the towns and cities and the state are doing, are doing wonderful initiatives. They just got to do more. That's my first suggestion. My second suggestion is that we're going to have to, we're going to have to do it transformatively. It's the most important way we have to c carry on, transformatively. We cannot solve new problems with old ideas. We cannot solve, we cannot take advantage of new opportunities with old ideas. We need, we got to get out of our, our comfort zone. We got to take risks. And that's how we're going to do it. That's the second one. The third one that we have to do to, to, to improve the way we're living and so forth, the way to get youth to come here and our youth to stay here, okay, demographically, is we're going to have to do it together, together now. When I was younger, when I was younger, I was told that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Well, science tells us today that that's not true. That's not true because regardless of what the individual power is or the link or, or the capability is, when you come together, when you come together, together, we're stronger than the individual parts. And that's what we have to do. Now, let me give you an example. Science also tells us that if the world, the world, every country in the world planted trees, planted trees, the, the two thirds of the CO2 gas, two thirds of it, which is a leading gas that, that leads us to global warming, contributes to global warming, will be absorbed by these trees. Can it be done? Two thirds, no longer we would have that gas in our environment. Now, yes, I read recently that India, India, in 24 hours planted, listen to this, 100 million trees, 100 million. Ethiopia, in 12 hours, planted 200 million trees. It can be done. It can be. We can't stand by and allow, uh, allow our economy to, to, to fade, to fade our, our towns to decay. We can't do that. Our youth to leave. We have to, start, we have to start working together. No matter how it affects us, we have to do it together. That's the idea. Now, with that said, let's go to my dioramas. Now, you know how that works. I'll tell you a story. I'll tell you what I was thinking about when I developed the diorama. I'll talk about some of the, some of the reasons why I did it, what I wanted to portray, 
while you're listening to the story, you're gaining data. You're stimulating neurons in your brain. And when you stimulate neurons in your brain, you heard me say this before, you, you use more of your brain, and the more brain that you use, the better, better decisions you can make, the more transformative decisions. That's how it works. At one point in time during the discussion, I'll say, this is a Geppetto moment. And I'll talk about a specific technique or activity, not necessarily related to the dioramas, but a technique you can put in your toolbox so you can be easier for you to make innovative, creative decisions. OK? Let's go to the first one. Now, the first one I call women number five. Women number five. Now, I've done at least five dioramas about women because I'm a man and I like women. However, more importantly, I respect them on equal terms. I respect their ability. I respect their ability to do many things. I respect, I respect them equally, and it's important that. Now, I've read recently that global warming is going to adversely affect women more than men. Guys, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. Every time we talk about something about men and women, whatever the case might be, they always get the short end of the stick. Why? We gave them the vote lawyer later. They have jobs. They're not well representative in executive offices like that. They have, we don't pay them as, as much as we, we get. We, we sexually harass them. Stop. Stop. Let me tell you something. If, if at a point in time, global warming affects us so much that we're underwater, she, not us, she will be the first one to walk on water. Now, what is the Geppetto moment? The Geppetto moment, you know that I, I'm an advocate of reading data, reading nonfiction books, anything. And in this particular case, I'm asking you, I'm, I'm, I'm revising you to say to read poetry. Why? Poets like artists are by nature transformative. They seek change where everybody else is change that might be toxic. Poets seek it. Read it. You don't have to understand the poetry. Look, listen to the word. Listen to the figures of speech. Listen to that to put it together. You will then use greater amount of neurons in your brain. And again, you'll be able to make better decisions that we need to accelerate, to accelerate this 2040 date. Let's go to the second one. Second piece is like another disaster. You could call it a disaster. Every week it seems that science come out and they say, here's another thing, that, that dire prediction that's going to happen to us when, uh, if we keep going towards global warming. Every week. Now, in this particular case, they talked about a prediction, but this, this is not a prediction. This is a gimme. You can bet on this. This is not an if. This is a when. Now listen to this. There is, in the Arctic, a piece of ice and snow, ice and snow that is ready to fall off in the water and cause the chaos in the coasts. That is big as the state of Florida. As big as the state of Florida. That many miles. And when that falls into the water, it's going to call that chaos. I mean, that is like a, a tremendous, I mean, a dire situation. However, it's not an if, it's a when. You can bet on it. I did this piece, you can bet on it. It's going to happen no matter what we do. Now, what's the Geppetto moment? The Geppetto moment is take a class. You don't have to matriculate in the school. You don't have to take tests. You don't have to take, you don't have to pass, pass mark, nothing. You don't have to read a book. Take a class in sociology, philosophy, uh, history social science, something where there's groups of people interchanging ideas and data, thinking, taking stances. All, those da all that data, all that interchange, all that argument, per se, is going to stimulate your brain, stimulate the neurons. You make, make a, you more use of your brain being able to make a contribution to your ability, easier to make the transformative decision. That's how it works. That's the better moment. Now let's go to the third one. Third one is pollution. Unfortunately, folks, we're all polluters. We're all polluters, and we have to stop. Because as far as I understand, this planet is the only one that will sustain our humanity. 
if we continue to pollute it and destroy it and abuse it, we're not going to be sustained. It's going to kill us. Now, today, right now, out in the Pacific Ocean, there's an area, thousands of miles, that has our disposable items, toxic waste, sitting on the surface, sinking into the ocean. As big, that area is as big, I heard as big as the state of Texas, if not Texas, it's Kentucky, Alabama, it doesn't make any difference. It's as big as a state. That's huge, that's thousands of miles. That's killing the fish, killing the water, poisoning the water, toxic, killing the fishing industry, and eventually will kill us. We have to stop polluting. Whatever we have to do to do it, we, and we have the power and the science to stop polluting. Now, what is the Geppetto moment? The Geppetto moment is dollar books. Every year, new books, new, in new industry, new information, new knowledge comes out. And there's a book, you know, book on it. And the book costs $40, $50. I don't want to spend that $40, $50. I don't think you want to spend that $40, $50. However, two years later, it's available for a dollar in Barnes and Nobles, in a used book, or maybe in your local library. Go there. Go there. Pick out some very inexpensively. You don't have to read the whole book. Pick out the nonfiction. Pick out the chapters in the table of contents that interest you the most. You may read the whole book. It doesn't make any difference. But whatever you read will bring new data in. New data means new neurons, means better decisions. That's how I do it now. Periodically, at this point, in the episodes, and this is the eighth episode, I like to go over some of the techniques, I want to do it today, from the techniques that I, that I recommend. That I recommend because it will make you a better thinker, a better decision maker, and we might be able to all help this 2040. Uh, we might accelerate that 2040, that year. Make it better. Make it today. Make it tomorrow. I want to go now. If you want a list of all the things that we talked about in the last eight shows, then send me your email, and I will gladly send you a list with an explanation. But today, I'm going to go over six pretty important ones. Let me go over them. First one is change your planning place. Good plans, good transformative thinking does not take place in a stiff, sterile conference room for businesses, nor a kitchen or a living room. It needs a, an element of play. Brainstorming needs an element of play. It needs lots of visual interest. Just the idea that you change the location of making the decision make, adds fodder to your decision making. And that's what you want to do. So change the places periodically where you make decisions, business-wise, social-wise, wherever you go. And, and understand that when you change, just changing the place will help you make better, more for transformative decisions. Store walking. I love to walk in a price chopper. Why? Because you walk in that place and there are thousands, if not tens of thousands of boxes with words and colors and sizes all over the place. Such visual stimulation stimulates my brain. And if I'm thinking about an idea, I'm thinking about an idea, then I'm going to be using more of my neurons to, to, to solve that problem, to solve that idea, to, to create that idea and make it fruition. Now, however, there's one caveat, one caveat to still walking. Do not do it when you are hungry because guaranteed you will buy food that you'll never eat. Never. Third one, drawing upside down. I read a book and it said when you doodle and you want to stimulate your brain, uh, draw something. Think for a refrigerator. Draw the top as the bottom. Draw the bottom as the top. Reverse it. Just the idea that you reverse it stimulates the brain stimulates new neurons. The idea that you're looking at it from a different perspective, like that, that'll help you make better decisions because you're using more of your brain. Talking to yourself. Sounds crazy. Probably is crazy. But many times if I'm dealing with a problem and I want to come up with an idea and so forth, I'll take two sides and I'll talk two sides out loud, like I'm having a debate. With who, I know it's me, but it's, maybe it's my subconscious, whatever the case might be. Talk to yourself. Talk out loud. It's okay. Don't let me, if everybody hears you, so what? You're going to get a better idea, a more creative idea, a more innovative idea. Reading about technology. Ladies and gentlemen, technology and science is creating our future. 
We have to understand it because we don't want it to, we want it to help us, not replace us. So you, have to, you don't have to understand the details, the science. Just be aware of what's going on because it's creating how we're going to live, play, and work in our state in the future, if not right now. Read about technology. And it's very stimulating also. Keep a diary. You have ideas, you have emotions, concepts, situations. Keep them. Go back and read them. When you read them like that, they might have new nuances. You might be able to use them currently with an idea that you're trying to create or a problem you're trying to solve. Keep a diary. It, it, just the writing it down will stimulate your brain. Now, at this point, I always like to start creative ideas, starter ideas on a real Vermont problem. Uh, just starter ideas and to generate maybe more of your thinking. Now, I heard that four or five, garage, four or five farmers markets have closed and those closing it assumed, and I hate that word assumption. Think of the first three letters, A-S-S. -S. You are that three letters. When you assume or you make hasty generalization, you don't have enough data. They assumed, how I hate it, they assumed that there was too many farmers market, not enough vendors, and on and on and on. That's not transformative thinking. A transformative thought would have been, what can we do to enrich the model of farmers markets? Why is it that farmers show up once or twice a week, whatever the case might be, set up their tents and sell us produce? Why couldn't it be uh, a permanent place, but a beautiful place, a beautifully designed place where people just want to go and be in the environment? And in that environment, maybe we add other experiences. Other, maybe we can become the, the final hall of like Boston or, or Boston Market. Why not? Why not? Why do we have to? Okay. The, concept is, the concept is to look at the model before you throw the model away and say transformatively how you could enrich it. That's the whole process, how you can enrich it, make it better, make it different. Make it get out of your, safe, your safety zone, take a risk, and make it better. Now, I said all those things, and, that's, and I think it's important that if you, if you are in a position, or you have ideas like that, if you have ideas, send them to me, and we'll discuss them here. We'll discuss, if you don't want to do that, send them to your legislator and demand Demand that they, that they pass laws, that they do initiatives to help us, get, help us our cities, help our, our youth to stay, bring youth in, do a more, but do it transformatively. And if you're in a position to make those decisions, I, said, I beg you, I plead with you, make it transformatively. Do not use old ideas. Don't make it political. Make it for the sake of the people and make it new, different. Okay, innovative. Now, with that, this is the Geppetto Room. You don't have to be creative to be creative. You just have to be you. Because here we explain and we explore ideas and concepts that are going to enrich the way you live, work, and play in, your, in state. I'm Lou Scott. This is the Geppetto Room. Until next time. Thank you.